this uh, session presents an introduction to the basic steps of using um, the GitHub AG program. GitHub AG is a Windows based program that we use uh, to prepare databases for the GitHub economic model. The presentation is based on a note prepared by Mark Horridge and narrated by Zakaria Hussain. The first and important step uh, once you have bought and installed the GitHub AG program is to bring the uh, GitHub AG license file to the same folder uh, where you installed the GitHub AG program. In my case, it's installed in my C drive, and this is my GitHub AG folder, and this is where my license file is. So it's important for you to make sure that you place the license file in the same directory where you installed GitHub AG program. Once you have done that, you can open your uh, GitHub AG uh, window. Once you open the GitHub AG window, you will see uh, eight tabs on your uh, left hand side and a bit of description on the right hand side. Let me talk a bit about the description. Here you see how the default, which is a 10 by 10 uh, mapping between regions, uh, takes 112 regions to 10 new regions, 57 old sectors to, to 10 new sectors and 5 uh, factors to 5 factors. That's the uh, first thing you will notice as you change the mapping, this information uh, will continue to change. The next uh, important bit of information is where you have the HRX file. I'll talk a bit about the HRX file and what it is and how it works. And the other bit of information is the DREL. This is a release identification. So we are working with release uh, 8, pre-release 1, uh, which was done in 2000, uh, based on database 2007, and was released in October 2010. This part of the information tells me that I have the full version uh, of the GitHub AG license. If you do not have full versions, you will get a message saying you only can do so much, uh, say, the maximum you can do is 10 by 10. You cannot uh, disaggregate the database more than 10 regions and 10 sectors if you don't have uh, the full license. So after the basic steps, the next uh, thing to do is to work on your uh, eight tab files. The first and probably the most important tab file is instructions and help. You can click on it and you can see everything you need to know about the GitHub uh, program. You can see how what it does and uh, where you can go when you have errors uh, in the GitHub uh, program. This is uh, pretty helpful and comes in pretty handy and does almost all help files do. The second tab uh, in, uh, in your right hand side is choose alternative source data folder. So the default is uh, usually in C or in GitHub AG, uh, where you have placed the, the aggregation program. That's where uh, the program will always look for, but you can uh, always change that. If you have a different database that's already uh, disaggregated and you want to work on it even further uh, to aggregate it to a, a much smaller regions, then you can uh, direct the GitHub AG program to that, uh, to that file, to that folder. Uh, so in, in here we have the basic uh, database, we have the HRX file, sets, defaults, weights, uh, default aggregation scheme, time series, trade data, and uh, uh, the database, GitHub data, volume data. The next step is the uh, read aggregation scheme from file. So aggregation scheme is nothing but uh, a mapping between regions, uh, sectors, and factors. So the next important tab that you'll see in your GTAB AG uh, 
window is the read aggregation scheme from file so you can click on that uh, and you can uh, use up one level tab to see the default aggregation scheme that comes with uh, the GitHub Ag program you can right click on it and you can open it to see what it contains uh, you can use any text editor in this case I'm using notepad so as you can see we expect to see 112 regions mapped to 10 new regions 57 sectors to 10 new sectors and 5 factors to 5 factors so the aggregation the default aggregation uh, data file will basically indicate the same thing so we have in section 1 we have 10 sectors and this is a description on the right hand side in section 2 we see how these 10 sectors were taken from from the 57 sectors so party rice is now in grain crops coal is now uh, in uh, extraction and likewise so all the 57 sectors will be directly mapped to the, to the 10 sectors that we have uh, initially specified section 3 is about regions we have 10 new regions and these 10 new regions are collected from the 112 regions that exist in the database section 5 is factors of production we have labor and land and skilled labor skilled labor capital and natural resources so this will be mapped to land and skilled labor skilled labor capital and natural resources one thing to to note is in factors some are sluggish uh, like land and natural resources we indicate this by giving them uh, the elasticity of transformation for of, for uh, sluggish primary endowments to be less than or equal to zero minus one for land and minus 0 0.01 uh, for natural resources if it is mobile then we don't need to specify any value we just say it is a mobile uh, factor endowment like and it's skill labor skill labor and capital you can aggregate these five factors into any uh, number of factors that you want but the github model requires that, that you, uh, you have at least one factor called capital so you cannot change uh, you cannot uh, have a non-capital factor in your in your in your factor aggregation so it's important to keep capital there all right so this is the aggregation file I will uh, later on describe how you can edit and change this file after describing the basic the other windows but this is a very important text and this is where most of the uh, aggregation uh, is done so once you've done that the next thing is to view uh, or change regional aggregation so there are two ways to aggregate the data set one is by changing uh, this default aggregation file you can edit uh, anything you want here or the other way is to just use the Windows version of GitHub Ag to do the editing there and save the aggregation scheme for later use so one way to do it is to view and change regional aggregation to view change sectoral aggregation to view change factor aggregation so all these three tabs will simply do what the what is already contained in the text editor we saw earlier so let's start with regional aggregation so here we see 10 regions so this is all region we have 112 regions if you scroll down you see 112 regions are mapped into 10 new regions so you can click you can scroll down up and down and see that each each old region is mapped to two new 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 regions and this uh, the third column is a description of uh, the original regions you can edit this new region you can change where a country belongs to say if you want Australia to belong to East Asia you can easily do it even though it doesn't make sense at this point but the most important thing to note is you can edit this file how do you edit it you just for example right click at the end of the lower window you can right click on it and you can insert a new region say if you want to change 
if you want to aggregate the uh, uh, Asia into from East Asia, Southeast Asia, South Asia into one big region called Asia, let's say Asia. It says unused for now. It's, uh, we will uh, change that and let's give it a new region description. This is pretty much optional, but it's always good for documentation. Let's say all of Asia. All, all you have to do now is go to countries which were initially described in any of the Asia's into Asia. So right click here, just left click just once and select Asia. So now China belongs to Asia, Hong Kong belongs to Asia, Japan belongs to Asia likewise. So we will see that a red line appears from those regions which were no longer active. Asia. So I think we're done. Kind of scroll down to check if there are other regions. So all these not used regions cannot be deleted. Right click on it and just remove. All right. So now, rather than ten, we have eight new regions. All right. So we basically, have aggregated from ten to eight new regions. Just press OK, and you have uh, now. You can see this line reads from 112 to to eight new regions, rather, uh, rather than. 10 regions. So likewise you can do the same for uh, sectoral aggregation. Uh, it's the same setup, the same uh, window structure. Uh, in the first column here you'll see that we have all the sectors. The new sectors, that's where they are mapped. This is the description of the old sector. Below in the frame, that's uh, just down below, you have the same structure like we, we saw earlier. We can add, change, edit, uh, any of these sectors we want. Let's say we want to add a new sector. We want to aggregate uh, a new sector uh, and we want to create say a combination of light manufacturing and heavy, heavy manufacturing. We just want a new sector called manufacturing. MNFC. It's not yet used so that's what it indicates. Let's call this all of manufacturing. All right. So all we have to do is go to here and change light and heavy manufacturing into manufacturing. So we're sure when you see a red line, then it makes sure you have uh, deleted all the previous aggregation. Now we don't need it here, so we just remove it. It is not used. So now we have uh, other than uh, 10 uh, re uh, products, product aggregation. We only have now nine. We just press OK. Uh, the next is to do the same for factor aggregation. So we have the same structure, land, skilled, unskilled labor, and natural resources. We want to aggregate uh, skilled, unskilled labor into one big factor called labor. To do that, we just right click here and we just insert. It can be before or after, it doesn't matter. So we just create a new factor called labor and we declare it to be mobile. And we just make sure this goes to labor and this goes to labor as this is these two are not used we just remove them from the aggregation scheme so you're okay so 
all we have done now is change all the information that there was in the initial aggregation scheme and it's it's reflected here if you admit an error you get an error message a message here indicating that there is a, some sort of problem if you will just to show you how an error can be uh, indicated if we just say delete this say okay then it says uh, we need uh, elasticity of transformation for sluggish primary factor so we need to indicate it's it's mobile mobile all right so once you have done that then you're ready you have created your aggregation and the next thing is to save the aggregation scheme uh, this is important one for the program to run and two for your own documentation so you cannot save it in the GTAP ag folder you can only save it in the GTAP ag store it wouldn't allow you to save in, in, in the GitHub AG folder. Alright, so you can only do it in, in the AG store subfolder in the program uh, directory. So here it says 9 by 8. You can change this to any 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 new anything you want, but this is very descriptive. It says GitHub aggregation from nine regions by eight nine commodities by eight regions. So I will I will keep it likewise. So we have saved it. The next thing is to just create the aggregated database. So again, uh, it will you can save this anywhere you want. It's saved in the temporary directory. You can save it in the ag store if you want, which is much easier. So it's, it has the same description as your aggregation scheme. And that's very useful because it tells you exactly where it comes from. And it is saved in, 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 in a zipped file. So the save file contains the set file, the base data, the default parameters, the base uh, view, the base tax rate, time series trade data, and the volume uh, database. Right. So this is saved in, 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 in a zip file because when you do a lot of aggregation over time, you don't want to be mixing files from different aggregations. All right. So all files, if you want to view them, have the same structure, the same file names. So you, if you just click uh, one of them by accident, you wouldn't know whether it comes from a smaller aggregation or a bigger aggregation. Yes, you'll see it in the database, but it's very important not to mix files from different aggregations. For that reason, the program gives you a zip file uh, format so that you can take all these files, you can move them in a bundle as they are created All right so if you click right click on if you just click on view output files you can see the set file all these files come in uh, in view har we need a view har program if it's a free utility program you can download and that's how you use to view it so this is what we have created so see h1 is set of regions we have uh, we should have eight regions uh, as we have desired initially trade commodities we created nine new trade commodities we deleted heavy and light manufacturing endowment commodities we should have four land capital natural resources and labor so that's how you would uh, use the github ag program to create uh, the aggregation scheme all right, that's a one way to do ch uh, choose your data folder as you skip this this uh, read aggregation scheme from file step and you directly go to your view change original aggregation there you, ch you can you can do uh, whatever disaggregation or aggregation you want say for example in this window uh, there is uh, an important tab here which says one to one so if you have a full version of the gtab ag uh, license you can click on this and you can create the entire disaggregated database this maps when you click one to one it maps each region to each region i mean it, there is no aggregation it's the entire database as it contains 50 in this case it will contain 112 regions 
so each region is mapped onto itself only so you can see it has 112 regions you can say okay you can do the same with uh, sectoral aggregation you can say one to one and it will create 57 sector metrics for you press ok uh, you can go sectoral aggregation here it is skilled and skilled you can change this to uh, you can create here uh, say insert after unskilled level and you can also insert a new a line for skilled labor mobile mobile so we're going to map unskilled labor to unskilled labor map skill level to skill level so this is unused now we just remove it so press ok so we have the entire disaggregated database of release 8 October 2010 so you can save this aggregation file to, to the scheme to your new uh, to to ag store now this is not, no longer 9 by 8 this is now 112 so let's call it 57 by 112 regions you can save it and you can create the aggregated database in a zip format so now you'll have it will give you this aggregated GTAP database so you can view outputs click okay it's just still creating the output files all right it's done so you can view output files say let's go to sets h1 is set of regions we have 112 regions yep exactly as as we expect you can view any other uh, the parameter the base data uh, any of them you want so we have 57 sectors on, 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 on the first column and we should have 112 regions over here yep absolutely so that's one way of uh, creating uh, aggregation or disaggregation using GTAP Ag. So uh, there is another uh, uh, probably better way of uh, creating and editing aggregation scheme files rather than say going to view regional aggregation and changing whatever it is that you want over here and doing it for the same over and over again for sectors and factors all you can do is just simply go to the say default aggregation scheme open it in any text editor and change anything you want in this file and save it and create the aggregation scheme i find this a lot easier much more uh, appealing to work with and less tedious but it depends on personal test so how do we change the aggregation scheme here it's very easy for example we earlier we created uh, nine sector out of the ten in the gtap ag so we change the light and heavy manufacturing into one big sector called manufacturing so we can do that here again just delete one of this and call this uh, manufacturing you can call this just all all manufacturing so we come to the 57 sectors that's section one in section two it's important to change all this light and heavy manufacturing into one big manufacturing sector so this light manufacturing now becomes manufacturing important to change all of that otherwise you'll get an error message make sure you wouldn't delete any 
any of the 57 sectors otherwise you also get an error message so it looks like we're done here all uh, light and heavy manufacturing disaggregations are now mapped to just one big manufacturing uh, sector the next is to change regions that's in section 3 we made east asia southeast asia south asia into one big uh, continent called asia we can do that here uh, so asia so we need to delete these two so we call this all of asia no nope. all right let's bring it back so we go down here and change all those these names to asia we no longer have east or south east or south asia so this has to be asia it's easy to make mistakes over here and it's important to be careful Okay, that seems to have done it. We have Asia, Asia, all of this is Asia. All right. All of this is now uh, just Asia. We don't have any uh, Asia down here. We're done with the original part. Section 5 is factor endowments. So we have skilled and skilled labor we, wa we want to aggregate it to one big sector called uh, labor so this becomes labor and its elastic of transformation is zero because it's it's uh, is not specified sorry because it's a it's a mobile factor so we map an skilled labor to labor in section six here uh, skilled labor to labor so we just go ahead and save this file in ag store uh, we'll call it uh, whatever you can give it whatever name you want call it new ag say uh, nine nine by eight say nine eight that looks okay so you can give it any name you want but you need the uh, .agg extension uh, to be there we can save it we can close this now so we can go to ag store and just bring this one here oh we have made a mistake so we now uh, move into section 5 where we have a factor aggregation we see land skilled and skilled capital and natural resources uh, so we earlier we aggregated skilled and unskilled labor into one big factor called labor and we can do that here also we can all we have to do is delete one of this and call this uh, labor so labor it should be should be mobile is mobile in our model we can uh, and we have capital natural resources so we can we, next we go to section six and change this mapping between uh, unskilled labor and unskilled labor to just labor skilled labor mapping is now to labor i did undo so skilled labor is should be labor so we have a mapping between skilled labor and labor and, and labor unskilled labor and labor so this is what we we have changed for now all right the rest remain as they are we go ahead and save this in ag store it wouldn't allow you to save it in the github ag folder so in ag store we, we give it any any name you want so we call this new ag new ag slash uh, eight nine so we have eight eight uh, 
uh, regions and nine nine commodities that's what eight nine is indicating you can give it any name you want but make sure you keep the dot agg extension because that's 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 important so we have saved it we're done doing aggregation here so next is just read the whatever it is that we created so this was the one we created this is we don't need this this is confusing you can delete that this is a, a new aggregation we created just open it and say it tells us everything that we want to know that we have every done everything right the, the name of the file is indicated here uh, it maps 112 uh, regions to eight new regions, 57 sectors to nine commodities, five factors to four new factors. So we have done that. Next is just to make sure we, we, we need to save it. Says yes, let's save it. Just a repetitive question. You say yes, just replace it. Then create the aggregate database. It comes with the same name as the aggregation scheme. Uh, and uh, it comes in a zip file. It's important to keep it in a zip file as we said earlier. So we can save that. So we're done aggregating. We can go ahead and look at our sets file to make sure we have everything we need. So we have eight regions, nine commodities, and four factors of production. The most important part of this uh, aggregation uh, procedure comes from the encrypted file called basedata.hrx. This file this file contains a basic uh, GitHub data that is used either to aggregate or disaggregate regions, products, and factors. You can view this database if you want. Uh, using uh, a utility uh, program called GView. GView is a free utility. You can download it uh, from the internet and you can tell it uh, to open the uh, HRX file. Go to your um, GitHub Act folder and look for basedata.hrx. So this is the page data dot hrx files it contains a basic github data that we are using uh, to modify for github model so you can view this data but you cannot copy it or you cannot edit it all right so it's it's uh, it's just there to make sure that you understand uh, where all these uh, databases come from so we have created a number of aggregation schemes and one of the tabs I said I'll get back to is choose alternative source of data folder. We were, for example, using the GitHub uh, Ag directory as our source of data, but we have now created uh, a few aggregations and we can work with those already created aggregations to create new aggregations from the old files. To do this, uh, so you go to your uh, C drive or where you have your GitHub Ag uh, uh, directory. Go there and go to this folder, subfolder, Ag store, and unzip any of the files that you already have created. For example, I have already unzipped the new Ag uh, into a new Ag uh, subfolder. Once we have done that, we can tell uh, GitHub Ag to go to the subfolder. In this case, new ag 8 by 9 and work from that database. So let's try this. So we say by default it creates new region, but we can edit, change this uh, the way we want. Say we can view and change regional aggregation. So we can say a 2 1 to 1 and it will give us our uh, 10 uh, or our na uh, 8 aggregations. We can edit this file even here so if you want to create a region called the American continent which combines uh, uh, North America and South America and we can simply do exactly what we did earlier all right so we can uh, insert a new region called Sahara America uh, say all of and that will simply contain North and South America 
all right so since these two are not used we will delete them all right so this is just to show you that you can use say cancel you don't need it now you can use alternative source of data you can change your uh, directory to manipulate already aggregated database let's go back to our um, database all right we can use gtap ag uh, before or after model simulations what we have seen so far is uh, to use it uh, before model simulations this is the first column in this picture which you can find from the gtap West website just search for gtap ag and you'll find this document the first column shows you exactly what we did with um, the github bag software we started with the unscripted the encrypted base data dot hrx file using gview we have shown seen that data this is the encrypted file it can only be read by github ag and github ag takes that data say creates a 15 uh, sector 9 region base data dot hr har that's a hard file then we take that data to GTAP model and we do uh, any simulation that we want that's usually the normal way that uh, most people use uh, but there is a, a second way and another, a third way the second column here indicates uh, the same process except that now we have GTAP model simulation called alter tax so as you know alter tax is used to adjust the database uh, to reflect uh, economic events or changes that have happened since the construction of the database so I have here a database that, that whose base year is 2007 so if I believe there are things that has hap that happened in those uh, regions of interest that I'm working with then I use alter tax to adjust the database to reflect uh, the new events after I done that I take I get results updated base data dot har I take that data to GitHub ag and and reduce from 57 to 50 regions to simply to 15 se sectors to nine regions then again uh, taking that zip file to the GitHub model to to do all types of simulations that I want so to repeat is it follows the same process we start from the encrypted flows use GTAP ag disaggregate into the bigger sector so that's say if it is now we have this was an old file this is an old file but now we have uh, 57 sectors and 112 regions so use that uh, in take that to G, uh, run GTAP if you are working with run GTAP uh, do a simulation of alter text to represent changes that have happened since the construction of the database get updated database to bring that uh, from the github model from run github for example and take it to uh, github ag create a new aggregated file 15 sectors by nine regions in this case and uh, take the zip file again to the GTAP model to to do all the simulations that you want so there are uh, this is an alternative way of using GTAP ag so the GTAP model and GTAP ag use exactly the same uh, interface so it shouldn't be a problem the third uh, way is probably for GAMS users or other uh, user written uh, data programs so we start with encrypted data that simply uh, we get you use GTAP Act to you know, decrypt the encrypted flows into a hard file. Use that custom program, whatever it is, it could be GAMS, it could be JMPAC. Then we take we do the same thing, we can take it to GTAP AG and disaggregate it and finally take it to the GTAP model to do our 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 simulations.